Now typically when you're making a multiplayer compatible map, um, you'll want four player start zeros at the initial point. Um, so um, you can actually duplicate an object, a selected object, by uh, by selecting that object and pressing spacebar. So what I just did is I, uh, I duplicated um, my player starts. That saves me some work and having to right click and realign and potentially have it be off. So we got one tree. <clears throat> we have uh, four player starts. We got a uh, we got uh, a uh, brush that's set to run a background sky. We could also add a light as well. Let's uh, let's add an ominous kind of light next to this tree, just to just to beautify it a little bit. Um, so what you do to create a light is you right click in the build window and choose light from the list. And let's uh, let's use the angle to make sure we get the light kind of in a position somewhere in the tree. Um, since we can't actually see what the tree looks like, we just have to extrapolate where the tree's uh, branches are going to be, somewhere somewhere near its uh, root, maybe somewhere near its base. So I'm going to put the light there. And right in here, we in the things and templates, and, and remember to activate things and templates, you press N. And in this light tab, you can actually change the properties of the currently selected light. Notice that it's highlighted red, showing that this light is currently selected. So we can go in and pick a color. And I'm going to create kind of an ominous blue. So you have you have several choices um, that you can make here. You also have this uh, this radiant of colors that you can click on for a desired color and then set its intensity of of that color. So what I'm, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to pick a pre uh, a pre-made color, and I'm just going to press OK. And what it did was it changed this uh, RGB value. And now I'm going to set the uh, intensity of the light. Um, I want this to be uh, a little bit weaker than its current light. So I'm going to set it to 250. So I'm making sure that both color and intensity are set. So be sure to press those apply buttons. And uh, just to show off the various styles, you can also click on uh, um, this uh, drop down menu and you have various choices like uh, flicker torch, uh, pulses, and fluorescent flickers. Um, I'm going to put a low turbulent uh, kind of an ominous blue, low to turbulent kind of light around there just to create something mystical about this tree. And then this offset here, um, if you put like a decimal number like 0.1 in there, what it does is it extends this intensity over a longer distance. So if you put 0.1, this light could potentially fill up um, the whole area. Um, so let's uh, let's put like maybe 0.6 or something too. This uh, this makes it to where um, a light doesn't have to be uberly intense to extend over a large area. I'm gonna apply this, apply all settings, make sure all settings are saved. So this essentially uh, sets the rate at which the uh, the light deteriorates at a distance. So now that I got the light in there, it's all ready to go. Um, I'm going to do another export. I'm going to actually save first to save and then do another export. I go full export. Keep the moonlight that I set up there and and also you can add an ambience as well. Um, that ambient lighting does uh, it does do a little bit of cleanup to a map. And uh, what I've noticed, uh, a good a good ambient light for me um, that works for most of my maps is to set intensity to five and the color to gray, and that creates usually just the right amount of dark ambience. So I'm gonna ex I'm gonna export again. <clears throat> 